Hi, I'm Beelers, and this is another of my quick start guides to using Microsoft OneNote. The clues in the name, there's a quick start guide, so there's not a lot of detail, uh, but I do rattle through a number of features or interesting um, options per episode. The idea being that if you're new to OneNote, say if you're coming over to some, from something like Evernote, after you've gone through my quick starts, you should have a good idea how to use OneNote in your workflows. Today, I'm going to go through um, some basic customizations that I feel are essential if you're using the tool. Um, as with anything like this, um, obviously your mileage may vary, and it's a very personal choice, but we'll see. So the first thing I would suggest, so we're here in, our, in my sort of demo notebook for, for these screencasts. First thing I would always do if I were use, if opening using OneNote for the first time, I would create an inbox section. I would also create a clippings section. Now, um, most of the options, well, all the options are found under um, the surprisingly named options section. Um, there are quite a few. Um, I'm not going to go through each one in depth, but I will dwell on a few of them. So general, I pretty much leave completely alone. Um, display. Um, I like blank page. If you like ruled lines, um, make it look more like a notebook, then you want to be ticking this box straight away. Um, we covered mm, quick notes in the past, and we'll, we'll, we'll touch on them again in a moment. Uh, if you would like it every time you create a new quick note, so that's, that's Windows N, um, you can have them dock immediately to the side of the screen. Uh, I don't y use that feature because I, uh, I always have a page docked to the screen every day anyway in my workflow, so that would get in the way, but um, that is a really nice feature. Now, this one here I would definitely recommend. Right, you want the, the, the pages to appear over on this side. Um, and um, the other ones here, I, I personally would, would, would just leave out. For instance, you don't want, um, every time you take a screenshot, you don't want a pop-up to tell you about it. I'm just going to close this down a minute and show you then what the UI looks like with the pages on the left here. Personally, I think this is a lot neater. Um, my eye is drawn to where all the stuff is. Uh, if I want to close that, I can then even slide that down and I've got more screen space. Obviously, I've got the option to do full screen as well. But personally, to my eye, having the pages and sections in the same place is absolutely essential. So back to the options. So proofing. Personally, I leave this completely alone. Um, you might not want spell spelling um, errors showing, um, especially if you know if you're taking a lot of notes and you've got lots of little red underlines. It might become quite annoying. It doesn't bother me, but that maybe that's the only one there you want to consider. Um, it's quite an important section. So you've got a couple of things I want to point out to you here under save and backup. Quick notes. Now, personally, I change that to go to my inbox. So if I create a quick note, some of the phone rings and I do a, do a quick win in to bring up a, a note without thinking. I can make some notes uh, and then I don't have to think about where that's gone to. It's, it's in my inbox. Um, I, I, as you'll see, I use my inbox for all of the stuff that I send to OneNote. Um, so I just can know where to find it. Now, backups. Um, I think this is quite... Um, well, not a hidden feature, but something that's quite useful. Now you've got you've got all your no, your data on OneDrive, and we've, as we've already discussed, you need to keep it on OneDrive if you want to access all of their um, synchronization features, uh, especially if you're sharing with other people. But one does like to have one's data, um, so a good idea would be to um, just in the moment it's just got this backup folder is going you know somewhere within um, you know your user's um, profile. I personally would modify this um, and and choose somewhere else to send it. Uh, for the sake of, the, of this, I mean, I normally I would save it somewhere like Dropbox or on my Google Drive, but for the sake of, of this um, tutorial, let's just make sure that we have our, um, our notebooks go to um, the, uh, the documents folder. Um, default no 
notebook location. I don't use local notebooks at all, so that's of no use to me. But if you do use that, that might be quite useful if you can't, if you create a new, new notebooks and, and you can have them always go to the same place. Now, you want to make sure that backup is ticked. And I personally um, would have this um, daily and um, two days, I think, is enough. Um, you could have more, but you want to play with the feature because you're going to start getting quite a lot of um, disk space taken up. So that really is up to you. Play with it and see how much sort of what the footprint of your files are. Uh, the rest of these here I would leave alone. Send to OneNote. Now, I don't use Outlook, um, so I leave these alone. Uh, when I did use Outlook, uh, I always, um, I, the other three I didn't ever use, but email messages uh, I would set to a default location and probably unsurprisingly is going to be the inbox. And now you'll see here, every time I forward, any, if I click the uh, OneNote icon within Outlook, a new page is created in my inbox. We've then got these three, which all you we, you want to change all of them. So at the moment, screen clippings are going to Quick Notes. I don't want that. I want them to go to uh, the clippings. Um, set you set a default location. I want to go to clippings. Um, print to OneNote. Definitely, I want to go to my inbox. Um, that's quite a useful feature. So if you're um, you know, you're viewing a web page and you just print. You got, there's a printer that you can use, and um, you can print a web page, and it arrives in Note, in in uh, OneNote. Now, you could argue that you could use the OneNote screen clipper, uh, but sometimes uh, I do this just because I want it instantly. And uh, web content um, that I believe is um, if you're using IE. Uh, I don't use it, but I, 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 I still set it just in case it, that it's, it's something um, that, you know, it, if, if there's something I'm using that, that, that is, is looking at that setting. So back to this clippings section here. So screen clippings. Um, so let's go and do an example. So Windows Shift S, and I now take a screen clipping. Now that's appeared within my clipping section uh, as a screenshot, and you know you can do usual things. You could save it as, you can um, you know look at the the text that's been captured, that sort of thing. I am I'm now starting to store these in a separate notebook because my, as you'll see in my workflow um, screencast, I. This can get quite full quite quickly. I use the, the screen clippings uh, feature a hell of a lot. And um, I don't really need them on my phone or, or shared between devices. So uh, I'm just for the sake of this demo, I'm just putting it within a section within, within this one notebook. But you might want to consider, if you've got other notebooks, which I'm sure you will have, if you've got one that you don't need open on your mobile devices as well, I would set a, a section within that. Because don't forget that when you do do a screenshot, half the time you probably don't even come to this page, because it's already in your it's already in your clipboard, and you're going to paste it in the page you actually want it. So, yes, a page arrives uh, with the screen clipping on. I would dump it in a separate notebook that you don't have open on your mobile devices, because then you're not because this does get as I said get get quite full, and because you've got it in the clipboard, it's kind of a waste anyway. Back to the um, the options. Just a couple more I want to go through. Um, yeah, we've done that. I, I don't touch audio and video at all. I don't touch language at all. Um, advanced, they're all pretty straight. F well, pretty straightforward, and um, all the defaults are fine for my use. You might want to if you want to laptop you might want to consider this one here you can set um so basically run notes always doing stuff it's to, to be as awesome as it is to indexing your rubbish handwriting uh, or mine at least um to be able to look at text and images and, and all of the other clever stuff it's doing uh, it's constantly doing stuff in the background uh, if you're running on a battery uh, on a laptop uh, you might actually say well i can 
put up with that being a bit slower um, and get more battery life. Uh, personally, I just leave this on, on medium, but you know, again, um, that's up to you. Now, the one here that I always change is this one here. So if you do print to uh, your print to OneNote, by default, it'll create a PDF or it'll create this an image um, pay, image per page, and uh, I don't I don't like that at all. Um, it, it, especially if you've forgotten and it turns out it's a 70 page document and I've done that a couple of times and suddenly I've got 70 pages and if actually what I want to do is read it through um, so I personally would um, untick that so when you do print uh, it all goes into a single page uh, that's that one now I don't ever customize the ribbon but just so you know you can do that you can f per per the different tabs here you've got the ability to change what buttons appear, but what I do change is the quick access toolbar. Um, for some reason, OneNote um, doesn't, um, it's stolen, it doesn't adhere to uh, control Y for redo, um, as, in every, as other, every single other Microsoft product does. Um, so I add, um, so I've just added that across there, and then there's, you can see there's all these other ones that you've got options. Another one sometimes actually is touch mouse mode if you're using a tablet, it's quite useful. Um, so I've just moved those over here, and you'll see they now appear. Um, you can also access some sort of pretty quick features um, from here to also, also enable. So that was um, a very quick run through of settings in OneNote that you might want to change. Uh, as I say, it's very personal. What, um, you know, how you set OneNote up. Personally, um, that's exactly what I do. If I ever install Windows from scratch and I'm installing OneNote, uh, everything that I've just gone through is exactly what I would do before I even start using the pro product. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I'm. Um, Beelers on Twitter if you'd like to get in touch. And you can also email me, beelers at siftware.com. Thanks very much for listening.